In this short video, we're going to talk about solving systems of differential equations using elimination. So it's very simple to our basic algebra uh, elimination method, with a big difference. That is, instead of getting numbers as a solution, your solution is going to be a second order differential equation, which you're going to have to solve. So let's see what, what we mean. So we're going to use systematic limitation. And our first step is to write equation using the differential operator notation. Remember that capital D? So D to the power of n means take the nth derivative of your input function, or the D by itself just says take the first derivative. D squared means take the second derivative and so on. So let's practice in this example where we're going to go ahead and rewrite these two differential equations, which involve two functions dependent upon t. So t is the independent variable in these problems. And both x and y depend on t. So our solution is going to be two functions, x of t and y of t. But before we get to that point, let's just practice writing everything in differential operator notation. So the idea is we're going to write all of the terms that have either x or y or one of its derivatives on one side of the equal sign, and then only the functions that depend on t only will be on the right-hand side. So when I do that, in the first equation, I'll have a negative x, I'll have a negative 3y, and that's going to equal sine of t. In the second equation, I'll have a plus 4x and a minus 2y. And notice that I put all of the uh, x in terms and its derivatives uh, next to each other, the y terms and its derivatives are adjacent to each other here. And so I can rewrite x double prime, that's the second derivative with respect to x, plus 2 times the first derivative minus 1 times x. So that is going to be d squared plus 2d minus 1. So you can re actually apply a distributive property. d squared operating on x gives me x double prime. 2d operating on x gives me 2x prime. And then the number negative 1 is just negative 1 times x gives me negative x. Similarly, y squared, I mean y squared, y double prime minus 3y will be d squared minus 3 in parentheses acting on y or operating on y. And again, if I use the distributive property, the d squared would say take the second derivative of y and subtract 3y. And so let's do the second equation. I just have the first derivative plus 4 times x. So that would be d, at d plus 4 operating on x. And here I'd have d minus 2 operating on y. And the, there's nothing done to the right-hand side functions. So let's start with a very simple uh, system of equations, which has two first order equations. So I'll rewrite these as uh, x prime minus 3y equals 0, minus 2x plus y prime equals 0. And then we'll put it using the differential operating operator notation. And the key here is that even though d represents a differential operator, in this method, we can just treat it as if it were a coefficient in the elimination step. So if I wanted to eliminate y from this system of equations, well, I would uh, multiply the bottom equation by 3. And then this is not really multiplication. We act as if it's multiplication. We really say we're going to apply d to both sides of the equation. But in the end, what I get is 
a negative 3 dy in the first equation, a positive 3 dy in the second equation, I can go ahead and add those together and I'll get a uh, second order differential equation in x. So in this elimination method, we don't get, we don't solve for variables. We eliminate one of the variables so that the result is a differential equation, a second order differential equation, uh, or maybe even higher, but it's a differential equation involving only one variable. So I can rewrite that as d squared minus 6 acting on x equaling 0. My corresponding uh, auxiliary equation is exactly the same as the differential, differential operator with the d replaced with m. So I can solve that. I get two distinct real values for m. And so my solution for the uh, complementary function, which is really the function, right? Because uh, these are homogeneous equations, uh, is just c1 e to the radical 6 2 plus c2 e to the negative radical 6 t. I think I said 2 in the first one. It should have been t. All right, so uh, we found a, a two-parameter family of solutions for x of t. What about y of t? We'll have to eliminate x. So we perform a similar operation. And go ahead and add those two new equations together. The result is a second-order homogeneous differential equation in terms of y. It actually has the same auxiliary equation. And so we get a solution for y as with a third constant times e to the radical 6t and a fourth constant times e to the negative radical 6t. Now, there's one issue we have to work with here is the fact that we have four constants, c1, c2, c3, and c4. They can't be independent because in our system, we have a first order uh, differential equation. We have another first order differential equation. So each differential equation should produce one parameter or one constant. So we could only have two independent constants here. Uh, so uh, there should be a dependency among these four cons constants. And one way of determining that dependency is to go ahead and choose one of the uh, original differential equations in the system. So I just chose the first one. They're both very simple. And so I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, candidate solution for x. I'm going to go ahead and take dx dt. And I'm going to say that has to equal 3 times my candidate solution for y. Now, this is. Uh, you know, again, similar to the idea that we saw previously with uh, undetermined coefficients, that we would say that, look, the only way that these two expressions can be equal to each other is if the corresponding coefficients are equal to each other. Another way I could say that is if I make one side equal to 0, the coefficients on e to the radical 6t and e to the negative radical 6t have to be zero because this has to be true for all values of t and there's no value of t which can make e to the radical 6t and e to the negative radical 6t equal to zero. So the only way that this can be zero for all values of t is if these coefficients are equal to zero. And so then I'll get a relationship from the first coefficient saying that uh, c3 it would be radical 6 over 3 c1. So c3 depends on c1, and c4 is dependent on c2. So I can now rewrite the solution for y using, so replacing c3 with radical 6 over 3 c1, and replacing c4 with negative radical 6 over 3 c2. 
and that gives you a nice solution to the system. So let's look at a, a couple of more examples. Um, it's basically the same idea. You might get a little bit more complicated expressions. So in this system of equations, if I want to eliminate x, well, x is being operated on by just d in the top equation and d minus 3 in the bottom equation. And so I'm going to apply d minus 3 to the top, apply d to the bottom equation. That gets me the same operator on x in both equations. So now I can subtract the equations. And the result is a second order differential equation with y only. And again, um, I know that I can just replace the d with m to get the auxiliary equation. So I am just going to do that step mentally. And I know then that m can be equal to negative 3, or m is going to equal neg a positive 2. So that gives me my solution for y. And then let me go ahead and eliminate y. And so uh, I'm just going to multiply the top equation by 2. I'll operate on the bottom equation uh, with d plus 2. So then I get uh, 2 times d plus 2 operating on y in both top and bottom. Now I can add those two new equations. And then that's going to give me a second order homogeneous differential equation in terms of x only. And so again, I get uh, the same auxiliary equation. And so I get a, an expression for uh, x of t involving two new constants, c3 and c4. Now again, if I look at the original system of equations, the top equation is a first order equation, and the bottom equation is also a first order equation. So in this system, I only expect to have two uh, independent parameters. So there must be a dependency among c1, c2, c3, and c4. So again, I just choose one of the equations. Um, I th think I chose the top equation. Let's see what it is. I did d plus 2y equaling negative dx. That's what the uh, top equation here would tell me. So let me substitute my uh, d plus 2 operating on y and set that equal to uh, negative dx uh, or set that, make that equal to 0. Work out the algebra here. And so uh, setting the uh, coefficients equally to each other, uh, that would give me the relation that uh, c3 is negative one-third c1, and c4 is negative 2 c2. So now I can write both x and y in terms of only c1 and c2, and that will be my uh, system solution. All right, in this example, we actually have a non-homogeneous system. Uh, the first equation has a right-hand side of t squared. So my first step will be to write everything in my d notation. So x prime minus 4x is the same as d minus 4 operating on x, and plus d squared y, and so on. So we're going to go ahead and eliminate y. So I don't really do anything to the top equation, but I just apply d to both sides of the second equation, and then go ahead and subtract those two. That gives me a second order differential equation 
uh, in terms of X only, it is a non-homogeneous equation. So first we're going to solve the homogeneous equation. When I simplify uh, the uh, left-hand side, it just simplifies to uh, negative d squared minus 4. So we can multiply through by negative 1 uh, and get d squared plus 4 equals 0. That gives me two imaginary roots, so complex conjugate roots. So my equation is going to involve cosine of 2t and sine of 2t. But now I still have to find a particular solution. And we're going to use the method of uh, undetermined coefficients because my uh, right-hand side is a polynomial. And so I will assume, if we remember, that our particular solution looks like at squared plus bt plus c. Uh, and so we are going to go ahead and apply the uh, derivative, get the derivative and the second derivative. And I have went ahead and multiplied through by negative 1. That's why we have a positive d squared plus 4 operating on x sub t. And that's going to equal now negative t squared. Originally, there was a t squared there. So uh, again, we'll, we're just going to make a substitution then and set the corresponding coefficients equal to each other. And that will give us our particular solution. And from there, we can write down the general solution for x of t. Still have to find a general solution for y of t. Uh, in order to do that, we are going to uh, eliminate x. That means I'm going to have to operate on the first equation with d plus 1 and operate on the second equation with d minus 4. And so the only thing that's new here is that we're going to be operating on t squared by d plus 1. And well, what does that mean? Let's just remind ourselves. Uh, we can literally uh, use a distributive property. So d operating on t squared is just take the derivative of t squared with respect to t. And then, of course, this is just 1 times t squared. And so what we get out of that is t squared plus 2t. So we're going to go ahead and subtract our two new equations. Now we see that uh, we have our t squared plus 2t on the right hand side. And the result is a non-homogeneous second order differential equation in terms of y. Now here we actually have a cubic auxiliary equation. So I'm actually going to get th uh, three possible solutions. So I'll have m equals 0 and m equals plus or minus 2i. So m equals 0 would just mean that you could have a constant as a, a solution plus a constant times cosine of 2t and another constant times sine of 2t. Those come from the imaginary solutions. So if I look at my original system, my original system has a second order equation in the first equation. And then this second equation is a first order equation. So I would expect two parameters from the first equation, one parameter from the second equation. So a total of three. Well, I've got five. So I know that two of them must depend on uh, two or must depend on the other three in some way. So again, what do I do? Um, I go ahead and take one of my uh, solutions here and I go ahead and use uh, the method of undetermined coefficients. Now, this is a, 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 a little bit of a wrinkle because here we're going to apply the third derivative. 
And here we have t squared. And if I apply the third derivative to just a t squared plus b t plus c, then I'm just going to get zero. And so that's not going to give me any information. So I'm going to have to use for my particular solution uh, a t cubed plus p b t squared plus c t plus uppercase e. So that when I take the third derivative, I have something which is not zero, it's six a. So I can continue to find my particular solution here. And now I've got expressions for uh, my general solution of x of t and y of t. But again, I have five parameters. Only three of them are independent. So I'm going to use, in this case, um, the bottom equation, the second equation, because it only involves the first derivative. So let me go ahead and find x prime and y prime, and then add that to x. That should all add up to zero. So let me just add these three together vertically. That would equal to zero, which means the coefficients on sine of 2t, or the coefficient on sine of 2t, that has to be zero. The coefficient on cosine of 2t would also have to be zero. And so that would give me a relationship which says that, uh, well, C4 then uh, depends on both C2 and C1 with this equation, and C5 depends on C1 and C2 through this equation. And this tells me that C3 must be an independent parameter. So finally, replacing C4 and C5 with their corresponding expressions of C2 and C1, I get my system solution. So let's end our discussion with revisiting a mixture problem with multiple tanks. Previously, we saw this system of tanks, and it led to a system of differential equations. And we actually had some initial conditions. And so we should be able to solve this system of equations now. So the method is exactly the same. I'm going to have to go ahead and write all of the x1 terms on the same side of the equation. Uh, all of the x1 and x2 terms on the, and the, their derivatives on the same side of the equation, and then rewrite them in terms of the differential operator notation. And so we're going to go ahead and solve the, this system as we've done before. The coefficients are fractions, so uh, we shouldn't be intimidated by that. And uh, we're going to proceed by first eliminating x1. When we do that, we get a second order differential equation in terms of x2. It's actually a non-homogeneous equation. Uh, we can uh, do some algebra and clear the fractions to get a, a nice uh, second order differential equation with uh, integer coefficients. And moreover, this problem is set up so that this right hand and left hand side will actually factor. And so we can get that the uh, solution to the auxiliary equation would be negative 1 over 25 and negative 3 over 25. So we get a complementary solution for, for x sub 2. Uh, the right-hand side is just con a constant, so we can use the method of undetermined coefficients. If the right-hand side is constant, we assume that the particular solution is also constant. And so using that method, we wind up with the particular solution just being equaling 5. And so uh, now let's go back and find a formula for x sub 2, a solution for x sub 2. We're going to use the same type of elimination. We're actually going to get a very similar uh, second order differential equation, which again, uh, its auxiliary equation will factor, and we'll get a, the complementary solution involving the same 
exponential functions, but with different constants. All right, we have a particular solution, so we can uh, use the method of undetermined coefficients and assume that the particular solution is also a constant, which turns out to be also five. And that's going to make sense, physical sense, and we'll see that in just a minute. Uh, so we're still left with the issue that we have four constants, but our first equation is a first order, and the second equation is also a first order equation. So uh, that would tell me that uh, I should only have two independent constants. So let's see what the relationship is uh, between the constants or among the constants. And the way we'll do that is we'll just pick one of these equations and uh, probably the uh, second equation here. You can see that uh, we, we could say dx2 dt is going to equal, I'll factor out the 2 over 25, and then I'll have uh, x2 minus x1 because I'm bringing all of those terms over to the left-hand side, so that's why it's x2 minus x1 equals zero. So I can go ahead and set up that equation and look at all of the coefficients uh, on e to the negative 1 over 25t, look at the coefficients on e to the negative 3 over 25t. I know that the those multipliers have to e equal to zero. So this expression has to equal to zero and the other expression has to equal to zero. And uh, it turned out to, to, to write C3 and C4 as the independent constants. It really doesn't matter. Um, and so I solve for C1 and C2. So I'm going to go ahead and replace C1 with 2C3 and C2 with negative 2C4. And now I've got a, a system to the solution. I have to impose the boundary conditions. If you remember from our, our uh, system that the uh, first tank had 25 pounds of salt and the second tank had no pounds of salt. And that leads us to C3 being equal to C4, which is 25 over 2. So now we've got the IVP solution. So we have two transient terms and a constant in each of the uh, solutions here. And uh, that should make sense because that means that as t goes to infinity, the number of pounds of salt in each tank is going to approach five. And why does that make sense? Well, because remember in our original system, the brine that is coming into the system has a concentration of 0 0.1. And so that means that the concentration of each tank in the system, as t goes to infinity, the concentration should approach 0 0.1, which means if I take 0 0.1 times 50, the number of salt, the number of pounds of salt in each tank should approach five. And that's exactly what our solutions say.